Next, we've got to talk about United because I'm absolutely frustrated and pissed off with what's happening with my fucking club. I don't know how to feel about anything. It's really fucking getting on my nerves. So we need to fucking discuss this, right? Need to, need to discuss this. So most of you will know that United finally did seal the signing of a striker. Um, so welcome Rasmus Hoyland. Um, he is now one of our newest strikers we have here, signed on the $72 million deal from Atalanta. Um, I've watched him play a couple of times. I think the game specifically I watched him play was an away game. Atalanta played against Lazio where they won 2-0 and he played up front essentially on his own and you got to see his full range of game in terms of being able to run in late into the box, his hold-up play, his poaching ability because I think a goal he scored, he actually tapped it in on the line um, and the, the fact that he's quite a physical player. He likes to kind of do the argy bargy elbow back into the defender stuff which I love from him striker. So all good, all fucking good. But, but, he is very young, very raw, and obviously doesn't have the best goal return. And in my opinion, I felt like we always needed a strike, especially after we got rid of Ronaldo, especially now we haven't exercised the option to keep um, um, Weghorst. I would have assumed we would go out and try and sign two strikers, one senior striker and a younger striker, because at the moment, except for Martial, we don't really have a recognised number nine. Rashford can play up there, by my personal opinion, I don't think it's his best position, and I would rather he played on the wings, especially on the left-hand side, cutting in. Even though during pre-season, we'd had this experiment with Sancho playing in the middle and whatever it may be, I just thought that would be a better to go about it. But that hasn't happened so far, which is really concerning, because I feel like going into the new season, we're not ready yet. We're not prepped to go. We're not ready. We're not firing on all cylinders. And we're in a position now where I feel like there is a possibility that things could get very hairy for us very quickly. Because to add extra insult to injury, Rasmus Hoyland, this young striker that we signed, isn't even ready to start the season. He's currently injured. There are rumours that it's a very serious back injury to it's just a precautionary thing because he's got a bit of a tweak. But either way, he's doing individual training on his own, away from the group, and he's not ready to play. So we won't be starting with this recognised striker in the new season. We'll have to start with Rashford or Sancho up front, which really does call into question why we did all the hullabaloo about Ronaldo. If we were not going to sign a striker and it wasn't going to happen, we probably should have kept him for another year and then got rid of him after the fact. Or try to sign a senior player um, who we could play in that position who wouldn't be that happy, who wouldn't be that bothered, right? Who wouldn't be that bothered about flipping playing up front on their own or wouldn't be that bothered about maybe having to be on the bench a few times here and there. That's what we probably should have done. But that didn't happen. So I'm a bit annoyed by it. The only thing that's really filling me with some sort of level of confidence is this news, courtesy of Sky Sports News, that West Ham have now made an improved bid of 30 million for Harry Maguire and most likely I think it's been accepted in a discussing terms this is a good thing because overall Harry Maguire's time at United has been absolutely abject and something that you know is probably needed to end very quickly and he's need to go his separate ways but in general I've never kind of been a fan of his anyway I kind of feel like we generally overpaid for him um he's obviously been a disaster in terms of his ability to defend um, the playing style that Eric Ten Hag wants to play doesn't really suit him because he really suits a team that wants to maybe defend a bit deeper so he can have time to react to balls because his recovery pace isn't the greatest his positional awareness isn't the greatest but actually the way West Ham play in a defend he'll be a perfect foil for them and I have heard through the grapevine that people are saying that David Moyes the manager of West Ham has basically let Harry Maguire know that if he does join West Ham, he'll be captain and most likely he'll play every single day. So every single game, which is great for him. But still, it's not great for us because another senior member of the squad leaves. Most likely, that's not going to mean we're going to get anybody in on time. And, and there still is no news about the sale of the club. Even though um, these pages like, you know, United District is telling us that the takeover discussions are not paused and Sheikh Jassim is confident. I'm not confident because we haven't heard anything from the Glazers. They are purposely, it feels like, really, really dragging their feet with the sale. They're, you know, announcing new kit deals. Um, they're putting out new kits. All the things are happening instead of actual timelines and updates as to when they will sell the club and give it to new ownerships so that we can have the ability to maybe 
restart and try to do things better than we did before because in my humble opinion the Glazers have been one of the worst owners of all time and definitely one of the worst owners that we've had at the club in terms of their you know inability and refusal to invest properly in rebuilding the club rebuilding the stadium rebuilding the facilities investing in the long-term future of the club wanting to win trophies it just seems like all they care about is finishing in the top four and kind of papering over the cracks so the sooner that we get the Glazers out the better but let's kind of quickly cover this um, article called of United District that talks about the negotiations with the um, Saudi um, group in terms of led by Sheikh Jassim in terms of their confidence of buying a club which I'm not too confident about because I feel like they are kind of pulling a fast one so it says as follows um, according to the take, the take discussions are currently taking place in multiple parties and are still on. This is according to Mike Keegan of Daily Mail, who has been at the forefront of breaking the news. It is claimed the Glazer family are negotiating with many parties for Ericsson Harkins Club um, with the view of a partial investment or full take up happening. Neither option has been ruled out. So, in my humble opinion, I've always had the feeling that the Glazers would prefer to get partial investment and then keep the lion's share majority of the club ownership because obviously they can extract more money at the club they get more investment to invest into it they don't have to put their own hand in their pocket and they can still pull out money along the ways too so it kind of you know it's, it's the best of both worlds but if they kind of sell the club outright yes they'll get a big chunk of money but there'll be no more you know there'll be no more flipping monies paid for them from the bank of man united in that regard so in, and, and knowing that they're you know parasitic leashes in how they approach the club i always thought they would do that but then news came out that the saudi conglomerate the saudi contingent did actually put in a bid that was making them consider a full sale and then people started to get giddy but so far i've got no op i've got no reason to feel like they want to do the full sale personally it continues so this claim that Glazer family are negotiating the, and those surrounding the bid from the Qatari businessman Sheikh Jassim are still said to be confident that they will prevail in the purchase of the club after the fifth bid was deemed to be the largest of any put forward the bid however still did not reach the six billion that has been asked for and the reason why this is really questionable is because recently they announced a new kit deal um, with Adidas I think it's going to kick in in 2024 and one of the main concerns for people like myself who are skeptical that the deal is going to go through is that if you're going to sell the club agreeing a kick deal with adidas seems like a weird thing to do really you you think you want to kind of wrap up your business and then just hand over the keys to the new owners and let them do what they want to do but handing the new owners a deal that you've agreed during the negotiations of you selling seems a bit strange but maybe this is what they're also doing in on behalf of the new owners who knows it continues it says the other major bidder British billionaire Sir Jim Ratcliffe, who we don't want, um, has offered to buy either 51% or 69% of the club, with the former allowing Joe and Avron to keep this share, while the latter would just be their option of the club and allow 59% of the currently to be available to NSC to the New York Stock Exchange. Most United fans would want to get rid of the Glazers outright, myself included. I think the Glazers have been awful owners. I feel like we need a change. We need a new fresh start and we just want to get rid of the Glazers outright. So for me, it's a full sale or nothing personally i don't want this whole partial investment thing i want them to be gone completely like every trace of the glazers to be leave to leave the club to get fired wherever it may be and the only way to do so is to get a full sale so unfortunately for me um sir jim ratcliffe rat being the you know where do we need to you know focus on there should not be the option and it continues here said in reports of majesty that it was felt by some individuals in the process that the discussion for the club had been paused although the news contradicts this the sale process has been now dragged on for nine months with no sign of when or if it will ever eventually end so it's looking like one of the most longest you know club sales in history again it makes sense because Mayonnaise is one of the biggest clubs in the world we generate a lot of money so it's going to be a complicated process it's never going to be easy but god almighty mate they are really making us work for us they're really making us work for it and it's kind of you know killing me it's killing me little by little but i'm hoping there is a resolution the only thing that's kind of bumming me out is stuff like this this is what's bumming me out right where is it this stuff seeing roy Keane, one of the staunchest you know anti you know one of the staunchest anti-glazer ex-pros in the club now modeling the third kit Again, it's the fucking third kit. Not the, not the away kit, the second kit. The fucking third kit is what he's modeling. And all of a sudden now, the Glazers' money is good. There was a period in time where Roy Keane would be one of the loudest critics of the Glazers, maybe even more so than Gary Neville. But this is kind of further proof that all of our ex-pros have a price. You know, they can be bought out, basically. Which, again, goes to show the, you know, outsized influence, power, 
kind of control the Glazers have had on their perception, especially in the UK, because they just silence people by uh, either taking away their access to the club or by giving them money in their pocket, which makes it impossible for you to say anything bad about them because maybe you got to sign an NDA or because you feel a bit guilty because you set their money now you can't criticise them on TV. So it's just a bit disappointing to see the legend Roy Keane, you know, fucking modeling this fucking shirt i fucking hate it but it kind of is what it is i guess it kind of is what it is and i'm now hoping that the sale can go through very very soon but again i'm not holding my breath i'm really fucking not holding my breath so let's see how this kind of plays out let's see how this kind of plays out